Hello and welcome to November's book review. Got four books to go through today and let's just get on with it shall we? So the first book, and excuse the damage, is The Dinner by Herman Koch? Koch? Don't know how you say it, but yeah that one. So this is all set in Amsterdam and it follows an evening where two couples are going out for dinner but it's clear that something isn't quite right. It's definitely creepy, like there's definitely an undertone to it, but and you know that there's something under the surface, but because they say on the blurb that the boys have committed a horrifying crime, you pretty much know straight away. I wish that they would didn't add that on the blurb and that was sort of a twist and a shock to the story, because it does appear at beginning that it's just a dinner between two brothers that don't particularly get on so if they'd then added in the horrifying crime without mentioning it on the blurb that for me would have made the book better and more entertaining and more memorable probably definitely the narrator whose name is Paul I think I believe his name is Paul but I can't remember off the top of my head there's something odd about him. I don't trust him at all, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. I think it's just that he's a bit of a psychopath or a sociopath. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is, but I think that's probably why he's a bit odd and a bit... I don't know, there's just something weird about him. There were times I was a bit confused about what was going on. It jumps about a bit and it took me a little while to actually follow the story. I mean, I got the overarching, I knew what was happening there, but then there were times where I was like, how does this relate? Is this now or is this in the past? And that was a bit frustrating. And about three quarters of the book is just this dinner where you don't, where they haven't mentioned the crime and things like that. And I would have preferred a lot more of the parents of the two boys arguing about what they're going to do about it than not talking about it. I understand that it had to be built up and that obviously it's a hard thing for the parents to talk about but I much would have rather them contemplating the moral dilemma than the let's beat around the bush part of it. Which leads me on to the moral dilemma which is probably the best thing about the book is that it really got me to think if one of my family members or Pete or I don't know someone that I'm really close to had committed a crime what would I do would I hand them in would I keep it a secret would I just play dumb as if I don't know anything about it I don't know so that was a really interesting moral dilemma to play around with in my mind oh sorry about my voice it's going all croaky right so the second book that I read was the Sunday Lunch Club by Juliet Ashton and I have to say it was so nice to be back at women's fiction and easy reading and all of that kind of thing obviously uh, last month I read Out on Bra White Teeth and Adam Kay's Doctor book thingy and then the dinner and before that I can't remember what I read before that so it has been a good month and a bit since I've read a good old women's fiction book and I actually really enjoyed this one possibly because it's been a while but no I really liked it I really liked the characters in it I felt that they were all quite well rounded if that makes sense you got their character it wasn't like some of the other books like the dinner where I wasn't sure of somebody I, I fully understood each and every one of these characters and I really liked the family dynamic of it all um, and how they come together like once a month-ish to have dinner together on a Sunday as a family which again is something that I sort of resonated with because that's what my family used to do so when my parents lived in London me and my brother and sometimes Pete we'd toot over to their house and have Sunday lunch together which is just a really nice way to catch up on everybody's week and you know do that and 
now that they've moved it's something that I do miss so I think that's part of the reason why I like this book so much because it's it's something that we do we did as a family so that's probably why I liked it quite so much and the way that the family talk to each other where they just take the mickey out of each other quite a lot is also a lot like my family we often make jokes at each other's expense because we know it's all in jest and it's all done in love so for me that's all really relatable and obviously when something does happen that is big news they are all really supportive and all and they react as you think their character would react but you know that they all care for each other and it was just it was really quite nice that's a really bad way of putting it i mean the book was predictable you knew exactly what was going to happen as with a lot of women's fiction but the fact that it was so easy to read i read it so quickly and the fact that the story was something that i could really relate to and it was enjoyable the story was enjoyable even if i knew where it was going to go i kind of didn't care that i knew where it was going to go so that was the sunday lunch club by juliet ashton the third book for me this month was nine perfect strangers by we're going with leanne moriarty i do apologize if i ever get any of these names wrong because i'm so bad at it i often just make up names when i'm reading books if i don't really know how to pronounce the character's name i just make it up myself i'm sure that's what everybody does but then when you actually have to come and talk about it on a camera you start going oh what if i'm saying it wrong but just go with it just go with me on this one so nine perfect strangers by leanne moriarty it's told by lots and lots of different well nine maybe more characters tell the story so there's a chapter not for every character all the time but it changes the voice the narrator changes quite often with every chapter and I like books like that I like books that have different voices different narrators because then you get to see other people's opinions of it I guess it probably plays into my nosiness but I did find that there possibly were too many voices in this book and that unlike the Sunday Lunch Club the characters weren't fully formed because she was trying to write of so many people there were a couple that had majority of the chapters so there was a character called Frances who to be honest actually quite irritated me she was an author and I found that it was a way for this author Leanne to write in fiction all the things that annoys her about her readers so there are times where Frances has a dig about readers and I actually think that's probably Leanne Moriarty's opinion but it's the way that she can get into a book which if that is the case well it frustrated me as a reader because I am reading one of her books but so I kind of felt like she was having a dig at me a little bit but maybe that wasn't really her intention I don't know but that's how it came across to me the the, the sort of structure of this book I also found a bit odd don't get me wrong I enjoyed it it was an interesting read and there was lots of interesting parts to it but for example the first 60 odd pages we hadn't even started the retreat I was like aren't we supposed to be I suppose I should actually explain what the book is about uh, so this is about nine strangers who go to a health retreat but it's not like your ordinary health retreat but for the first 60 pages or so you haven't actually reached the health retreat and I thought that was a bit long I thought they probably should have done more time in the health retreat and less time and then getting there also the last few chapters are a completely different format to the rest of the book and I don't get why that choice was made I guess it's so that it looks a bit more like one of Francis's books I don't I don't know I didn't really get it I mean it it added to the story and to the ending but I don't understand why the format suddenly changed maybe that's just me and also there's supposed to be a big twist in this and there is a twist but I thought it was going to be bigger so when it happened I went oh, that, oh that's the twist oh that, that was a bit disappointing I 
sort of figured bits of that out already. So that, as I said, that was a bit, bit of a letdown. But on the whole, this was this was a really interesting book, and I liked her writing style. I've watched Big Little Lies, well, the first series. I need to watch the second series, so I won't read that book. But some of the other ones I might do. In fact, I think I've got one of these on my Kindle. Maybe the husband's secret. So I liked her writing, and I probably will give more of her books a go. And the last book I read was, oh dear, I've got to try and pronounce his name. Uh, so it's Lolita by, and I'm going to have to turn it around so I can read it properly, Vladimir. Vladimir Nabokov. The problem is this is a classic, so loads of you will have read this and know how to pronounce his name. So that that's not going to be very good, is it? Essentially, this is about an old man seducing a 12 year old. So I did feel slightly uncomfortable about reading it, if I'm quite honest. I also don't really understand any of it. I understood the, the story, what each point of the story was, but all the words in the middle of it, not a clue. I understood each word, the meaning of it individually, but how that tied into the story or what that was adding to the story, no idea. It was far too wordy and flowery for me. I might have said this before, but I'm not very good with books like that and they frustrate me massively. This also had lots of sentences in French and I don't speak French, so I very much felt like I missed out on a load of important information there. And I just didn't really enjoy it. I just found it difficult and uncomfortable and just not my cup of tea at all and largely he is a massive creep and I don't like him very much bad enough that he's seducing a 12 year old but he doesn't like dogs either I mean that is that's alarm bells if someone says they don't like dogs it it makes me a bit wary of them in the first place that was like the last straw it's like trying to find something good in you but now that you've said that I can't, I can't anymore, I just don't like you and I don't like the book. End of. So that's that, that's November's book review. I will see you for another one of these in the new year because that's when we'll do December and looking at my to be read pile it's a lot of women's fiction. So we're back on, on safe ground shall we say but I will see you in the next one. Hope you're having a lovely day or evening when you're watching this. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you, bye.